Look at this, isn't it beautiful? Fields and fields of yellow. Crap stuff, but it looks beautiful. Full seed rape for those of you who aren't in the know. Um, the dust off it really buggers up asthmatics. Look at all those fields of yellow look everywhere. And then the problem is they um, that was very nice of him. No need for it, but yeah, a lot of dust off it affects your asthma and then it turns black when it goes into seed pods and when it's really really dry they harvest it and guess what <laughs> it's really bad for asthma so this is quite a hateful place to live in the summer for crops but I can't deny it does look stunning doesn't it Just mile after mile of it. Just thought I'd stick that in. Purely because I can put in a video what the hell I want. <laughs> Funny rabbits. Good morning, friends, enemies, and anyone else soft enough to end up on this channel. I've been an interesting week. I um, haven't done much riding. I've been fettling um, and repairing or maintaining. Oh, I don't know doing stuff. I've been doing stuff. Um, I'm having a very gentle ride at the moment. All will be clear. Started the week with um, removing one of my lambda, or both of my lambda sensors. KTM in their wisdom designed the exhaust pipe to run very close to the bottom of the fuel tanks which you know are all down the, the sides and the lambda sensor sticking out the exhaust um, I noticed when I was doing some work the exhaust pipe had actually somehow obviously vibration and whatever moved about mm, five mil but it was enough to push the lambda sensor against the fuel tank when I got it all off um, there was a melted hole in the bottom of the fuel tank not all the way through thank goodness but I figure about another 500 miles riding I be a fireball yay that was all right in the winter but now the milder weather's getting here so I got some lambda eliminators the sensors out, put the eliminators in and was quite pleasantly surprised at the results. Um, KTM 990s are famous for flat spots. Huh. Um, about the 4 and the 8,000 RPM. They've gone. And she's a lot smoother on acceleration. Now I'm not going to claim crap like it's got more power, but she's more responsive, friskier. So really, KTM's cock up has led me to find a very pleasant alternative. So one thing led to another, as it does when you tinker with bikes. I noticed the rear disc was a bit furrowed and a bit narrow and recent new pads I'd put in
some new pads I'd put in had um, glazed it. I'm not sure if this is catching it. Um, it's quite a healthy ridge there. And it's looking pretty, pretty grooved. Well, good quality pads from a well-respected manufacturer. I'm not going to slag them off. The ones recommended for this bike. Uh, so I ended up putting a new disc. That looks somewhat better. You don't stop there, do you? Obviously new pads. But I did all four front pads. And this is my first ride after doing the pads. And as is common sense, you just take it gently. Ah, the country. Couldn't wish for better, could you? I'm not going to go past because that dog will probably rear up. Yeah, see? That could have been a horror story in the making. Yes, anyway, back to where I was. Um, just riding sensibly. So as not to overheat the pads or the disc. I've got plenty of time for Tom Fulry and roaring about. Um, lifetime of doing brake shoes, brake drums, brake discs. I've learned, if you break them in gently, you won't have any problems. And of course, it's an opportunity just to check that everything's tight, because obviously, at the same time, I refresh the fluid in front and rear, total bleed through. I don't mind going like a bit of a hooligan. It has been known on the very rare occasion. But I like to stop. Ugh. Sorry, couldn't resist. Um, yeah, I'll ride like a hooligan when it's appropriate. I don't think after a major break overhaul that's the best time to be a hooligan. I don't know. Maybe you're one of the brave. That was all. Just sort of keeping you in touch. It's odd when nothing external happens, so there's nothing much to ramble about. they still sell petrol. It was used to, but I've not seen anybody in that little garage filling up with fuel for a long, long time. Of course, um, Good Friday tomorrow, Easter weekend, they will be out in droves over the weekend. Motorbikes, mopeds, scooters, caravanettes, caravans. 
overloaded cars with luggage on. And I must say, it's going to be a stonker of a weekend, so I shall spend some time cleaning, drinking tea, avoiding people. <laughs> it just gets dangerous on the roads on an Easter weekend. Well, that back brake certainly seems to be pulling nicely. I'm pleased with that. And the front discs have got very, very slight grooving in. Um, not enough to f defect them. I'm sure I'll get another couple of few thousand miles out of them. But when a brand new pad touches them, it only rides on the top of the ridges. So until you burnish those ridges into the pads, however small they are, and we're talking microns, but they can have a dramatic effect. Until they burnished in, you're not going to get maximum braking pressure. But you know that. Anyway, back to the weekend. It's going to be stonking, apparently. Now, this is 10 o'clock in the morning, and I've already done away with my, um, what do you call them, the first layer you put on? There's a name for it, isn't there? The thermal layer, base layer. I've done away with those today. And I normally wear two thin fleeces under the jacket. I've done away with one of those. And it is lovely and warm. I've got my summer gloves on, Airtex. Summer is coming, guys. Now that I've said that, as of Bank Holiday Monday, the temperatures will plummet again. Hee <laughs> uh, Call me a jinx. I'll leave you to it now. Whatever you're doing this Easter, have a good one. Whether you're with family, on your own, doesn't matter. Just enjoy the time. And if you're working, try and find something nice. And I will see you all after the bank holiday weekend. Bye for now. Bye.